Welcome back to Rich Reviews. There are certain maintenance and safety checks that you should be performing on your car on a regular basis. Today we're going to walk you through the key safety and maintenance aspects that you should be performing on your car to make sure that your car is fit for purpose on the road and keeps you safe. <laughs> Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. We'll be walking through these checks using our Lotus and Mira as an example, but obviously these checks aren't relevant to a particular brand, they're across all brands but specifically how to perform those checks, some of the items will be relevant just to the Lotus and Mira. For example, how to check the oil and how to check the coolant level. So first of all, let's move to checking the oil because first of all, you've got to make sure when you're checking the oil that the car is up to operating temperature. Now the manual is far from clear on this. I've spoken to Lotus directly today about this and definitely you should make sure that your car is up to operating temperature when you check the oil. You should then turn the car off and you should let it sit for around 10 to 15 minutes actually you know not too long um, so that the car doesn't cool down but that enables the oil to drop down to the specific level because it's not a dry sump which means that you've got a proper sump there and you're measuring at the sump level with the oil level so what you need to do to check the oil is you need to get the keys first of all open up your boot or open up your engine cover I should say now the oil level check dipstick is located underneath this panel. The way you access it is you push this lever forward, which lifts up this panel. Now do not make sure you keep hold of this really tightly. Do not drop it down there. If you drop it down there, you're into a world of hell. You'll have to take all these panels out and you'll have to dig down there or go to your friendly dealer and ask them to retrieve it for you. And of course, you can't really drive the car when that's down there. So you'll have to get it trailered and you're into all worlds of hell. So just make sure you don't drop the panel down there and you put the panel into the boot of your car so it's not hanging around here so it can't fall down. I know I'm probably stating the bleeding obvious here, guys, but honestly, <laughs> planning is better to make sure you don't make that happen. Now, I'm just going to get a torch. So the dipstick is located right down here. And you can see it, it's got the yellow handle. So just to recap, we've got the car up to operating temperature. We've then pulled over, we've parked the car up for around 10 minutes, and now we're gonna check the oil level. We've got our trusty toilet roll, because <laughs> you need this. Now you need this for two reasons. Obviously, to make sure that you're not getting oil all over the car, and you've got something to wipe the dipstick with, and secondly, you need something that has real contrast against the dipstick so you can clearly see the oil level against the surface. And being white, it's a very clear contrast. Now your oil color should be still quite clear, it should be a golden color. It shouldn't be really dark. If it's really dark, then it should have been changed. So let's retrieve the dipstick. Now, first of all, you retrieve the dipstick. You don't even try to measure it, first of all. You wipe it clean because the oil could have gone up all over the dipstick and it's not gonna give a true reading. Um, so first of all, you wipe the dipstick, then you pop the dipstick back into its slot, which is a bit tricky. So after you've popped the dipstick back in, then you need to pull the dipstick out again, and then you need to hold it up as a contrast against your white cloth. And you should be able to see the oil level. Now, I can't see squat on that. <laughs> so sometimes you have to do this multiple times. You have to pop it back in, Give it a few seconds for it to gauge the level and pull it back out again. Now you can see the oil level is here and the marker is that, so that's at the top level, the top marker. You've got two markers, that's the bottom marker and that's the top marker. So the oil level is at the top marker, so that's fine. And if we just put that as a contrast against the white cloth, you can see there quite clearly the oil levels at the top marker, which is perfect. It shouldn't be above that top marker, 
A little bit above doesn't really matter. In between the two markers is fine, but at the top marker is ideal because the oil has expanded with the heat and it's not going to expand anymore. So you've got plenty of room to play then with regards to oil level. Just as a point of note, you'll notice that the dipstick is a little bit curved because it has to reach around a bit when it actually goes down into the dipstick pipe. So try and put it back at the same angle that it came out. We've checked the oil and now we need to put the oil cover back on or the cover to the section with the oil cover. Now again, there's a little lip here. Make sure that lip goes underneath this lip and doesn't drop in underneath. Be very, very careful when you're putting this back. So that is located properly. You don't want it again falling down into the engine compartment. Now this has a little clip in it. You have to support this first to make sure it is going to clip back or I'd recommend you support this first with your hand and then push it back. Now you won't necessarily hear a click. You hear a little click and that's it locating back in and just give it a bit of a tug just to make sure it is in there. Again, you don't want it falling back in. So that's the first item that we've checked, which is checking the oil. The second item we're going to check is the coolant level. Now the coolant level is also positioned in the engine compartment adjacent to where the oil dipstick is, but it's quite a convoluted way to check it. You have to look through the gap, through the engine compartment to be able to see the oil level. And I'm just going to shine my trusty torch again through the panel and you'll be able to see it just through there. And you can see, if you look very carefully, you can see the water level and you can see there's a maximum and a minimum mark. And the water level must be between the maximum and minimal mark. Here, as you can clearly see on mine, it is well within. It's closer to the maximum mark, which is where you want it. And it's well above the minimum level. So that is ideal. And again, the water level should be checked when the car is warm. So it's ideal to check your coolant level just after or at the same time you're checking the oil level because the car will be at the correct operating temperature because of course water because of course water expands and therefore you want to make sure that you're checking it when the water is hot so it's expanded to its maximum level so you're checking at the right time at the right level so we've now finished in the engine compartment now we're just going to talk you through what you should be checking on your tires if you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. So first of all, you should be checking that there's no damage to your tires. And the easiest way to do that is quickly to run your hand around, around the perimeter of the tire and then around the inside of the tire. Now you should be checking this a lot more co comprehensively than I am. I'm quickly doing this just to show you on camera, but you should be checking all the way around the tires just to make sure there's no nails, no cuts, no abrasions, no bits of braid that's been exposed, etc. And all, And also, of course, you should be checking your tire tread depth. Now there's certain tread markers on, t on cars, so you can feel for those tread markers to see if the tread is, is too low, is, is is, um, is down to those tread markers. In effect, what you should have is 1.6 millimeters of available tread across 75% of the width of the tire across the whole circumference. So let me just say that again. The legal limit is 1.6 millimeters of tread across 75%, that's three quarters of the width of the tire for the whole circumference. And that brings you to the legal limit. But I'm not saying that you should run your tires down to the legal limit, because especially if you're driving a performance car, you, that is really reduced adhesion at that level. So you'll, you want to make sure you've got more tread than the minimal limit, especially on sports cars and supercars that are capable of driving a lot faster and need the adhesion to the ground a lot more than normal cars that drive at normal speeds. So that's the safety aspect of your tires. Now I'm going to show you how you should be checking the tire pressures. 
So I've got here a trusty tire pressure gauge. This measures in bar, not PSI. You can measure in PSI if you want. This is set to bar and I've got the computer system set to show bar on the actual gauges as well in my car because obviously we've got tire pressure monitoring system on the Lotus Amira. And on most sports cars and supercars, you'll have tire pressure monitoring systems don't go by your tire pressure monitoring systems with regards to the tire pressures that are in the car. I check my TPMS, which is the acronym for tire pressure monitoring system. I checked the TPMS on my Lotus Amira before we came out today and it showed that they were fine. But when I checked with the gauge, they were quite a bit under. So the TPMS system is good for knowing if you've got a flat and if there's a big discrepancy between your tires. So if one of them's going down, but it's not great for letting you know what the actual tire pressures are. It's not very accurate. So keep that in mind. You should be checking with a proper tire pressure gauge. And the way you perform that check is you take the dust cap off the valve. You put the dust cap to one side, make sure you remember where that dust cap is because those things are like 10 mil sockets. They go missing just by looking at them. And then you want to, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the gauge very well with this tire, but you want to hold the tire pressure gauge up against the valve and make sure it doesn't hiss, that it seals properly to take a read in. Like so. Then come back and read the gauge. And you can see it says 2.35. Now that should be 2.2, but it's 2.2 when it's cold. So you should be checking your tires when the tires are cold. That's expanded because air expands, that's expanded up to 2.35 bar because we've been driving the car. So that's fine because I checked them before we came out and it was 2.2. And a lot of people will think, well, that really need to check tire pressures. Yes, you do. And, you, and I know most of you will not be checking your tire pressures regularly enough, if at all. You might want to speak with your insurance company because if your tire pressures are outside of a certain range from what they should be and you have an accident, it's the reason why your insurance company can void your claim. So you will not be covered. So you must make sure that you're checking tire pressures on a regular basis. Like I say, if you're outside of a certain tolerance, it's a legal factor that insurance companies can void your any insurance claim. So get checking your tire pressures guys make sure your car is safe especially if you're driving a sporty slash supercar at spirited speeds so you should be checking these things i check them all the time on my 458 and i check them all the time on a lotus we're traveling around a 400 mile round trip tomorrow and therefore before i do any trips of any sorts of any duration i always check the tire pressures to make sure that they're correct and again you want to check your tire pressures cold now Specific to Lotus and Mira, the tire pressures are 2 bar front, 2.2 bar back. But if you're driving the car more spirited, then you can put another 0.2 on those values. So if you're driving the car quite aggressively, then the front should be around 2.2 and the back should be around 2.4. But again, those values are only for the Lotus and Mira guys. They're not for your car. Check your manual for your specific tire pressures relevant to your tire sizes. Moving back to the engine compartment, another check that you should be performing, especially if you're going on any trip of any duration, is of course making sure that your washer fluid is up to a sufficient level. Now this isn't a safety check, this is just general maintenance because you want to make sure that you can clear your windscreen, which I suppose can become a safety issue as well if you can't clear your windscreen. So in the Lotus Amira, the washer fluid is this easy to access container here, just to the left of the supercharger. This is the supercharger, by the way, for the V6 model. So you just unscrew the cap and you just make sure that your fluid is up to a certain level. It's down a bit on this particular car, but you just need to just top it up with water and a mixture of washer cleaning fluid, which you can buy at, your, at, your, at any car maintenance shop. Um, so just make sure that that's up to a certain level, but that's not a safety issue unless you can't clean your windscreen. And that's all the engine compartment errors. Now, with regards to normal cars, one of the key things you should be checking as well is your brake fluid level. Now, commonly the brake fluid master cylinder where the brake fluid reservoir is held is in the front of the car. So you should be checking that area. In some supercars, it's in the back, but mostly it's in the front and 458s and most Ferraris it is held in the front. And I've shown you that before. I put a link into the video where I actually show you how to check those brake fluid levels on my 458, which will encompass most supercars. On the Lotus Amira, unfortunately I can't show you because you've got to dismantle 
this front section to gain access to the brake fluid reservoir, would you believe it? So you can't quickly check it. You've got some tools in the tool wrap that comes with the Lotus Amira to facilitate undoing the fasteners that are located here that enable to, you to then hinge this front section forward. But because you can't do that quickly and easily, it's not easy for me to show you. At some point, I will be opening up this front section and I will show you how to access and how to check the brake fluid levels on the Lotus Amira. Um, but it is something really you should be able to check on a fairly regular basis. You shouldn't be just leaving it to when the car is serviced. But there it is, you know. Um, unfortunately on the Amira, you can't check it quite easily. You must be relying on your brake fluid dash lights to make sure that if you have any brake failures obviously you'll see some brake lights come up on or you'll see a check engine light coming up showing a brake failure and then obviously if you do get that check engine light coming up showing brake fa failure whatever you do don't drive your car but with regards to checking the brake fluid level unfortunately i can't show you on the lotus mirror but make sure you are checking it regularly on your normal car whether it be a sports car, supercar, or a normal car. It, like I say, it should usually be located, attached to the, to the brake master cylinder at the front of the car. And obviously it's where the brake fluid is held in a brake fluid reservoir. So that's pretty much it guys. That's the key items that you should be checking on a regular basis to make sure you, that your car is fit for purpose to be driven on the roads. And of course, to keep you safe.